What's up, Sea Pancakes? So I'm coming to you from my room, and this is going to be a bit different of a video. So essentially what I am going to be doing is walking you guys through the construction of my flamethrower from Alien, first movie, that I'm going to be making. Um, Dragon Con is in almost a month, so... I figured that instead of doing a video at the end of this process to show how I made it, I would do one during the process, especially because I'd love to see how I go about doing this and if I can make it cheap or any kind of shortcuts that I found. It's not going to be like an exact replica because obviously I am a poor man who can only afford so much, but I figured that if this video can help one person or if you guys enjoy watching cosplay related things, it'll be a different thing um, for me to have on my channel as opposed to just convention videos and videos about me going to Disney all the time. So I hope you enjoy whenever I start making this. <laughs> So this is the gun so far. Me and my dad are going to work on this. This is, what, 14 inches? 16, 16 inches of two 2x4s two that we are going to screw together and then we're going to carve the base shape of the gun out of this and then work on doing aluminum handles coming out of the bottom. <laughs> And of course, two by fours are very, very, very cheap, and screws are also very, very, very cheap and easy to come by. And if you have one of these things, then obviously this process becomes a lot easier. But so far, not too shabby. All right, so we've taken off the front bit of the gun and the back bit of the gun. We have to slim it down just a little bit more we used the, um, that saw for the corner pieces and we have to use this one for the longer pieces or the longer bits to get it to the right shape. We're using the bandsaw now to get some of the more finer edges. It's a good thing we have so many saws because I don't know how this would work otherwise. So we've made the top piece of the gun, which is going to look like this once it's all put together. It can be screwed to take out because we're gonna need to be able to attach the aluminum pieces on the bottom of this. So we've only screwed it on this side so it can be taken off. And now we're going to glue this piece on so it's permanently there and then we'll have this piece detachable so that once we get to the aluminum, it will be good to go. So this is an update. Yesterday we went shopping at Lowe's, spent about 20 bucks on all the material that we needed. We got these oak pieces that are going to be the handles. They've been used, we use the bandsaw to shape them down to the right size. And then we have one of the pieces on top, which is gonna be where the um, strap goes so that it can be, so I can hold it on my shoulders. Um, we're gonna let it sit and I've got the big boy for when we start attaching all of the PVC. This is going to help make the nozzle to an extent. So, a lot has happened since I last updated you guys. Um, my dad worked on this on Sunday, it's Tuesday. So essentially he took this aluminum that we found at Lowe's, cut it in half, put the um, PVC inside of it here, epoxied it on the inside, and then sanded down the other pieces of PVC here to epoxy those in as well, found old computer wiring, to attach on the inside here and that goes in there so that's what we are looking at right now we are about two and a half weeks away from the con at this point it is um, very um, hefty on the front end of the gun there's still about 10 inches for technical technical accuracy that's going to be back here for this cylindrical part of the gun. We've got a plan in place for the, um, the uh, tanks. So hopefully we will go shopping later this week to get more supplies because we've kind of used everything else. Still missing the holes on the front, so I don't know if that's gonna be something I do or not. Mostly my concern is getting the big pieces on so I can start painting and detailing and weathering this thing um, because, you know, it's coming up soon. 
I should also note that the reason we went for oak instead of the aluminum, like I said, was because um, oak pieces, or sorry, aluminum pieces are very expensive and none of them came in the width that we would have needed to make these handles. So we opted for oak instead because it's much more sturdy and I mean, it came out looking really nice. I can still, you know, sand or um, finish this off to make it look like it's metal. All that we need to do is make sure that the whole gun looks, you know, somewhat legitimate. So if you guys want a cheaper solution when you're making this, I would opt for the oak instead. As you can see, it is like actually in place in here. It's not just like stuck in. Everything is very, very cemented into place with even detailing from the bandsaw to make it look like the trigger, which I think looks awesome because we want to make this look as legitimate as we can. And I don't know if I showed this top piece here. Yeah, I think I did. But it is going to be screwed down more or glued down once we get the other piece on. But yes, I just figured, I don't know if I covered that on the other clips, so I wanted to make sure I covered it in this clip. So I have off today, finally, after like working so many days in a row. So I'm gonna head over to Joanne Hobby Lobby and Home Depot to hopefully get the rest of the supplies needed to work on the gun, which I will take you guys along for the journey because I'm not really sure what I'm all needing with me, but I brought my gun with me so I can like figure out what I need. I pretty much have almost all the pieces there's just a couple little ones I need to get and I think I need to get um, a better sealant when I actually start detailing it and stuff so yeah let's go don't mind me <laughs> just walking through Hobby Lobby with my massive massive gun and I didn't hit anything at all don't worry about it it's fine all right, so my first stop was Hobby Lobby. Um, don't judge me for it. I'm trying to just use the resources I have. So for the gun, me and my dad decided to use this plastic canvas for, um, on the top of the gun, there is a, there's like a mesh part right here. And so this is gonna just go like that. See what I mean, you see what I mean? 69 cents, 69 cents for that. Not bad at all. Also decided to get this sealant, or this is a primer. I'm gonna try this out. I've not tried the, uh, tried this primer before, but it says, you know, one, it's a white-based primer, which this whole gun is pretty much off-white. So I figured that this would be the best color to go with, and then I can just add the detailing in after I prime it and paint it. But um, I'm hoping, and it's a flat too, so that's gonna be really helpful because the gun doesn't have any kind of shine to it. But I'm hoping that this works really well. I'm trying really hard to make this as durable as possible because I have that issue and of course no weathering is complete without metallic paint and so I've got some lovely silver metallic and also this bronze metallic because there's some a lot of weathering on the front of the gun like on the head of the gun and I pretty much have every other color that I need for this but I just really needed to get um, some really good metallics again these are my favorite i would highly recommend them they are perfect for detailing and weathering things if you ever do that and last but certainly not least i got craft foam i have a really thick piece i'm not sure what millimeter it is because it doesn't say on it for some reason but i got a two millimeter because that's going to be going on the top of the gun where that mesh is where this where this plastic canvas is this is going to go atop like on the top and over it, if that makes sense. Just because it's really easily moldable and I'm cheap, you know? This is like a dollar something. And Hobby Lobby has the best um, se selection of craft foam that I've seen. It's better than Joann's. But now I'm gonna go to um, Home Depot and get the rest of the pieces that I need for this. And hopefully that will be it for me. Let's go somewhere not problematic, huh? Huh? Hmm. Perfect. Oh, don't mind me. I forgot to get a shopping cart. I've been walking around with this and I keep getting the weirdest looks. I think people think I'm carrying a gun. I got such a, got such a god dang mess over here. So I got this pipe, PVC pipe. It is three inches thick. It's the nicest size for the gun. It is two feet long, so I'll be shaving that down to about 10 inches. 
and then for the other pieces on the side of the gun I got these two so I got this small one this is two inches that's gonna go on the front these mending plates is what they're called this one's gonna go on the front of the gun and there's gonna be a circle and then there's gonna be a smaller rectangular piece and then I got these bigger ones these ones uh, go on both sides. There's two of them and they're towards the back of the gun. So it's gonna be like one, two, and uh, yeah. So I'm gonna stop by Walmart really quick to pick up some things that I know are cheaper there than they are at Hobby Lobby and Home Depot. And I think I should be done. So yay. Okie dokie. So the last thing I needed to get were these button cover buttons. They're seven eighths of an inch. They were only, um, $1.77 at Walmart, they were almost $3 at Hobby Lobby. So I had seen them earlier this week, which is why I got them here instead, because I knew that they were gonna be there. And after seeing those prices, I was like, it's literally the same thing. Why am I gonna pay like $2 more? Especially since I'm trying to make this cheap. And then I also decided to opt for this enamel coating. I've never used this one before, but it says you can use it upside down too, which I always find myself doing when I spray paint my things. And it's um, high performance. It says it works on all types, including wood, metal, concrete, and masonry surfaces. Um, and I probably will do a couple coats of this once I finish the gun to give it the highest chance of staying um, safe. Also, this one was at like the front lines of the thing, so it got covered in whatever, like more spray paint. But I'm excited to try this one. It's much more, I feel like it's much more heavy duty than the stuff I normally use. So I'm excited to see how this makes the gun look. So, like I said, that should be everything that I need to buy for the rest of this um, prop making. Um, me and my dad are going to be working on the gun the rest of this week and obviously next week too to make sure that it gets done in time for Thursday because Dragon Con is next Thursday um, but uh, yeah I will obviously show you guys as much as I can I definitely will show you a lot of the actual detailing painting and weathering since that's gonna be my area to take over because I can actually do those things and since I can't use the power tools blah 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 but yeah so we will see where this gun ends up taking it. I'm loving doing this. It's been, obviously I can't devote as much time to it as I normally would be able to. So this has been over the course of almost a month, two months that I'm making this, but it, in reality, it's probably about a week's worth of work so far. So yeah. So I just added the first coat of primer to the tanks that we're gonna be putting on the bottom of the gun. Probably gonna add another coat just for safekeeping. It's definitely added a lot more of a matte tone to it. It's taken away a lot of the shine, which is awesome. So yes, round two. These are the two colors I'm gonna be using for the actual um, tanks. I have this one, which is the same color that I'm gonna be using on the entire gun. And then this one, which black which I'll be using for the other tank to make it red. It does have a gloss to it, but my um, enamel should bring that gloss down a little bit. But if it do even if it doesn't, it'll still be nice to have a little bit of a different textured look to one of the tanks. Working on this. There's a lot of little details on um, the gun that I have to sand out. So I'm using my Dremel to get, there's like a little crescent moon shape right here. Cause there's a lot of pieces of the tank right here. There's also a giant square here. So I might try to Dremel that in too, since I have to wait for my tanks to dry right now. Also, I got the pieces cut for this. They're gonna fit right there like that. 
and there's going to be a thick layer of craft one that's going to go over this because it's covered. I'm going to have to like drill a hole also in this so that the hole is visible. But yeah. All right, so we just used the bandsaw to cut this piece of PVC down to about eight inches, which is going to put the gun at roughly 29 inches, maybe 29 and a half inches, which is two inches short of what its technical accuracy length is, but I feel like that's okay. We're just trying to make sure it actually fits on here in the first place. about an hour for it to set and uh, it smells um, really not good. It's, it's very very strange. I can't really tell what that smells like. It's really odd. Well I just dremeled in the four holes that are on the front of the gun. Not complete holes because I didn't really know how far I could go but at least there's indentations so when I can paint this it'll make it a lot easier on me and I learned that I can actually take this on and off so I'm gonna start weathering and detailing the front of the gun so that I at least have that done by the time I get to the rest of it so yeah pretty cool I forgot to show you guys the finished product. So this is all the weathering that I've done so far. I don't know if I'm gonna add more or not. But uh, yeah, I really liked the way it turned out. It's very bronzy. The holes might need a little bit of touching up, but they do look like legitimate holes, which is awesome, 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 awesome. And a little bit, a little bit, blah, 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 did a little bit of weathering down here. I had to paint these metal rods white. I know, weird, right? Um, and then scratch off the paint that I did so it looks like it had like chipped off and stuff. But yeah, liking the way it looks so far, don't you think, Chippy? Don't you think? Well, I learned that it's actually um, unsafe to not have protection when you do dremeling. So. I'm gonna try a little bit more dremeling, and I have I I tried to find a a mask at a Target, but I couldn't find one. So uh, it's gonna be this. <laughs> I'm like a crazy bandit or something. <laughs> I never did show you guys the um, finished product for the tanks, so I don't know why it does not want to focus. There we go. So this is the red one. It is completely dried overnight. It's still got a little bit of tackiness to it, but it's fine because I'm not going to be doing anything with it for a while. And then the white one had a bit of issue. It's definitely got a texture to it. It's kind of grainy because I found out that this high performance enamel it sprays white for some reason, and it does not say anywhere on it that it does. It doesn't say it has any kind of color, it doesn't say it dries white or anything. So I started spraying the white one first, which is a, a really good thing, because then I learned that it just kind of turns it white. And I was like, okay, well, I guess that's fine. And I got a little bit on this one, but I was just like, I don't want to put so many coats of spray paint on this that it makes it so tacky. So I just kind of 
sealed it as it was and it should be covered theoretically but yeah this the white one has a little bit of texture to it but they're both sealed they're both fine they both don't have any rub off or anything like that oh and they both fall on the ground so yeah <laughs> thank god for this okay so i was at work and my dad worked on it while i was gone so this part is completely detachable from the gun it is attached via via this piece right here this pulls out and then this comes out the tanks are all actually like connected via epoxy into this and now my back barrel piece is finally in but i'm sure i'd be able to remove it if i wanted to yep slides right out like that so that way i can remove both of these and this and that way this gun becomes much more um transportable and there's less of a likelihood of me breaking it <laughs> if that you know happens but you know there's a lot of other things i have to do on this we are like probably like the 70 percent done portion of this which is awesome there's still a lot to do okie dokie so today i have accomplished pretty much nothing um but i did all these myself i screwed them in myself and i also attached the craft foam here don't worry about all the holes it's fine <laughs> um and then i did it on the opposite end too it turned out much better on the opposite side um but yeah this is all done all we have to do is attach the tube that goes this way two button covers here on both sides and then i can begin the process of priming and painting this so that'll probably be tomorrow or monday depending but yeah this is gonna be so cool i know this probably happens to everyone but my co my uh, basement's become a cosplay war zone right now lots of sawdust and stuff everywhere it'll probably be much better once the con is over but right now it's just that mode of get as much done as you can because you don't have much time left Okay, so here is my update for today. I have finally attached these pieces. Um, I used epoxy. As you can tell, it's still real rough. I plan on going, once this is fully sealed and set, I'm going to go back with my Dremel and try to sand down these little bits here. And I attached this tubing. Because believe it or not, there's like six billion pictures of what her freaking gun looks like. And every picture is different. But this is a, there's a picture from the set of the movie where there's a tube coming through here and going in through that way. Yes, it's Christmas Tuesday, don't worry about it. And then- I'm worried about it. Don't worry about it. Um, so on this side, you know guys, I had, I had this side all done that way. Well, actually, when I looked at other pictures, it's actually not like that at all, so I'm gonna have to completely remake the left side. It's completely different from what I thought it was. So yeah, that's where I'm at right now. But we also attached, there's um, I don't have it with me at the moment, but um, for the tanks that go on the bottom, there is wire that connects from the top right here into the bottom of the tank so we made those and uh, yeah we're making progress i think tomorrow will be the day that i can officially start on the paint job so yay so here's where we're at right now i just added a ton of layers of primer and a ton of layers of the off-white paint that i'm using for this i'm really liking the way it turns out I can't put this in all the way because one of these nails is interfering with this going in. So I'm going to have to wait for this paint to completely dry before I take it apart and take a look at that. But this is what we're looking at for the right side of the flamethrower. And then this is what we're looking at for the left side. And I kind of just give that um, nail a paint there and it'll be good to go. But I am loving how this is looking. It's finally starting to come together. Yay, hold on, I actually can't stop the video because I'm holding this heavy gun. Okay. Yay. So I am now working on the actual detailing of my gun. I started out by putting this around the tank 
or the other cylindrical tank that I have here while I got Jurassic Park on in the background. So hopefully I can make this thing look pretty and dirty at the same time, like me. So, he is done. Well, he needs to be sealed. But besides the ceiling, he's done. I attached the top pieces, I glued them down, attached my strappy thing. And so this is the left side of the gun in its completion. Looks good. I had a bit of a snafu with this yesterday, but thank God for epoxy coming through like a champion. And I will show you the other side. And here's the other side. I'm quite happy with how the weathering turned out on this puppy. Um, it was a lot of fun. I watched Jurassic Park and Captain America Winter Soldier to keep me occupied while I weathered it, which is perfect for me. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to need to get the ceiling because I do not want any kind of fallout coming off on this because I worked too gut dang hard on it. But I will be sure to show you the ultimate final finished product once I am completely done. So, I've got this unknown sealant that Tina gave me. Getting ready to seal the bad boy! Yay, guys, we did it! I'm shaking the camera a lot because I'm shaking the can! Yay! I'm so happy and it's been getting a really good reaction on all my social medias so far so I'm just really really happy with all the reactions and all of the work it's like all the hard work that me and my dad put into this is paying off and it makes me so oh god this smells like a butt <clears throat> it makes me so thrilled I cannot wait to wear this to Dragon Con woo yay okay guys He's gotten three very nice coats of sealant. So I just wanted to do a nice slow pan on everything so you can take a look and see how he turned out. Ooh. Yeah. So good. If you guys have any other questions, I have a whole folder that I put up on my cosplay page with much more detailed progress pictures of how I made this. I will leave a link to that in the description down below. And you'll be seeing this on my vlog for Dragon Con, which I will start after I upload this video tonight. But yes, it has been an amazing journey with you guys. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I really feel like this tested me and my dad to our limits to, you know, creating something from scratch that, you know, was historic, like, accurate and also, like, you know, proportioned right and stuff. And it's been an amazing journey and I love how it turned out. And I'm so, so excited to wear this and use this this weekend. And... I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you want to see more videos like this, just let me know in the comments down below. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for watching.